Uh, I guess these are in order. Let me see if they're in order. <laughs> Okay, subject, I already got it by subject, there we go, by subject, this is 2.5 number 6, 2.5 number 6, I don't know if we did this one, did we do this one? Yeah. No, I don't think we did, because, or look in your notes and see if we did this one. I don't think we did. I think we were fixing to do it. Okay, so draw the draw the two graphs and see which one. First thing I would do is rewrite it because nobody writes a function negative 2 minus x. So go ahead and turn that around and make it negative x minus 2. And the other one would be 2x minus 2. Now, one has a negative slope and one has a positive slope. Does everybody agree with that? So, you know, you still have these two have, let's see, that's a positive slope, that's a negative slope, that's a, po that's a negative slope, that's a negative slope, so it's not this one. You know it's not that one, so we got, and you know it's not this one, because no, that's a negative slope, and that's a positive slope. This is a negative slope. This is a positive slope. This is a positive slope. This is a negative slope. So the only one, this is a negative slope, and this is a negative slope. So D is pretty much out of the question. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with rewriting the problem. Now the reason you need to rewrite it is because nobody writes like that. So f of x is equal to brackets negative x minus 2 from x or x is less than or equal to 1 and 2x minus 2 x is greater than 1. So I'm going to take my handy dandy graph and we want to call this one blue. So negative 2 is your <coughs> y-intercept and we have a negative slope so it's left to write down 1 to 1. So 1 over so it looks something like that. This says that my my uh, range, or my, I'm sorry, my domain is from 1 to where? Negative infinity. So 1 is right here, and it goes that direction. So I'm going to have to erase what? I'm going to have to erase the area right here. And what kind of circle goes at 1? Closed circle. So we know pretty much these two are out. So it kind of narrows it down to one, but we'll go ahead and do it. I'll do it in red. What is the y intercept? Negative two. And we've got a positive slope, so it's going this way. And it's two, one, two, one. One, two, one. One, two, one. And take the red highlighter. And this slope is what? I mean, this domain is what? So that means I've got to delete all of this until I get to wherever one is. And that is what kind of a circle? So which one? Looks like A to me. Good job. And you feel good about yourself. And y'all thought piecewise functions was difficult. 
All right, so that's that one. Next one. Next one is 2.5. Oh, I replied to that one, is it? Well, there it is. 2.5, number six. Did we just do that one? Yes. Okay, let's see if it's the same. It's not the same, it's negative four. But let's see if we can pick it out without. So what's the slope of this line? Negative. So we got opposites, negative and positive. These are both, let's see, that's, that's positive, that's negative, that's positive, that's negative, that's negative, and that's what? Negative. So you know it's not B. A lot of people say, well, Hubert, I don't understand how you're doing that. Which way do we read? I'll show you a quick way to do it. Which way do we read? Left to right. So put your car. Put your car right here. Put your car right here. What are both those cars doing? Going downhill. Negative slope. It's amazing what that little car will tell you. Okay. So this one, negative slope and what? Positive slope. So we've got three choices. So let's go ahead and find... There's the y-intercept of that function, which is a negative slope. So we're trying to find a negative 1 y-intercept. Boom. No, that's not negative 1, is it? A is? Oh, yeah, there it is. Sorry. Okay, so that's, and now let's find a y-intercept of negative 4. I'm going to take my handy-dandy line maker. I'm going to extend this. Well, I had to pick the wrong. <sighs> Damn versions. Did y'all watch the debate last night? <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm going to change my vote for uh, what's his name? What's his no Beto? Beto. 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 I'm going to take away all your guns. I'm going to take away your AR-15s. I got an AK-47. I got a I got a 12 gauge shotgun. I got a 30/30 rifle. I got a 45, and I got a 9 millimeter. You know how long I've had them? About 15 years. You know how many people they killed? None. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't understand. Why are you going to take the guns away? I don't understand. All right, so it's A. Can anybody tell me which state in the United States has the toughest gun laws in the United States? California. Nope. It even beats California. What state or what, what city and state has the toughest gun laws? What city has the toughest gun laws in United States. Is it Detroit? Chicago. Who has the highest homicide rate? Chicago. Check it out. Chicago. But y'all don't hear about y'all don't hear about the killings in Chicago, do you? you? Don't hear about those. Forty-three people were shot last weekend. Forty-three people. Did you hear it on the news? Nope. Our all about power. All about control. Got that right. We feel good about ourselves. Yay. Now the next one. 2.5, <laughs> number 8. 2.5, number 8. Oh, yeah. Is this a test question? Yes. It is a test question. I don't think we did this one. I think we did one like it. This is a test question because I'll make it makes you what? Want to quit? Because what? It's got fractions in it. We can't do fractions. We can't even read a yardstick. So how are we going to do fractions? So here we go. What kind of y-intercept? We got a positive two. I'm gonna make this blue. We got a positive two. One, two. What kind of function do we have? It's a parabola, but it's open in which way? Down and it's wide or narrow? Yeah. It's wide. Right. Yeah, you're losing. Oh, right. See, that's why you that's why you're gonna fail this class. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what? Let me get my highlighter. And 
What's my domain for this function? Less than what? So I've got to erase, let me put a 2 here. So what kind of circle goes here? Oh, yeah. And we erase the side. Uh -oh, I'll do my friend like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Okay. I'd like to have fun on Friday the 13th. Jason's coming to get y'all all. Y'all know that, don't you? I'm not scared of you. You're not scared, Jason? As long as Chuck is going to Oh, Chuck. You really think Chuck is going to do something against Jason? Yeah, this is not scary. Chuck ain't even. I feel like, hey, I'm not Chuck can't even I'm make enough money to pay for his own film. <laughs> I'm like, listen, I told you you were. You need to get. Let's go see Annabelle. Oh, no. Oh, you see Chucky, but you want no, to see Annabelle? I don't like Chucky anymore. No, you don't? Okay. All right. We're going to do red now. One half X. So what's my y-intercept? Plus what? Zero. Okay. Which way? What kind of slope we got? Positive. So that means one up, two over. One up, two over. One up, two over. And what's my domain there? Two, but i got to put a what circle? Open circle, and I need to delete... This little area right here. Yeah. What's the question? You got a question? Y'all got to speak up. If you got a question easily in Oconee, I mean Oconee and Pendleton. Okay, which one does it look like? A. I'm looking. Yeah, it looks like A because this one is what? That one's upward. That one's upward. So, one of these two. And you think it's A? Check A. And y'all were so scared of piecewise functions. Now you're going to suck at everything else, huh? Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. All right. So that's that one. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at the 2.6 one because we did touch on 2.6. So we might be able to do it if I haven't covered it, if I have covered it. So there is the 2.6 question. 2.6, number five. Let's see if I've covered it. Yeah, that we can do this because F composed of G, G composed of F, F composed of F. Now we're going to do that first, and then we'll worry about the domains and all that, okay? So let's go ahead and just focus on these three right here, and then we'll worry about the domains. So F of X is equal to X squared. G of X is equal to square root of negative x plus 25. I don't know who writes it that way, but nobody ever writes it that way. Okay, so they want first a, they want f composed of g, which means I've got to rewrite f with a big set of what? Parentheses. And then I'm going to plug in negative x plus 25 square root. And what happens when you square a radical? It cancels. That leaves you with negative x plus 25. Now, of course, you know the domain is all real numbers because is there a radical or a fraction involved here? No, so it's all real numbers. Range? You would have to look at it, but it should be all real numbers also because it's a linear, it's a straight line. B, G composed of F. So I'm going to rewrite G with a big set of parentheses and plug in X squared. And that's going to give me the square root of negative x squared plus 25, because that negative is out front of what? 
the function. So there's nothing that square can do to change that to a positive. If you have a negative out in front of star, it's going to be negative star. If you have a negative in front of x to the 58th power, it's going to be negative x to the 58th power. There's nothing you can do about that. Now, this one, you have to set the denominator equal to what? Zero, so you can see if you, you can't have a negative under the radical. Now, first thing you're going to say is, well, Hubert, there is a negative under the radical. I know that. But that's not the end result. This is the function. So you got to find out the end result. So negative x plus 25 is equal to zero. Negative x is what? Equal to negative what? And x is equal to what? 25. So if you plug in 25, you're going to get zero. All right, wait a minute. No, I didn't do that right. That's square. Five. Should be five. There's an x squared there. Sorry. Let's see, that's going to be negative x squared. Negative, okay, divide by negative 1, x is, okay. All right, so positive or negative what? 5. If you put in a positive 5 right here, you'll get a negative 25 plus 25, which is 0. You get a negative 5 here, you're going to have 25, negative 25 plus 25 is 0. But something in the middle, let's pick one, okay? Neg let's just draw a little number line right here. You got negative 5 and what? Positive 5. We're going to put in 0 right there. So we know that negative 5 will give us a 0. What about negative 6? So what's negative 6 times negative 6? 36. 36. 36. Negative 36 plus 25 will give us a positive or a negative? Negative. We can't have that. Okay, but we're gonna, I'm going to put that in red because we can't have negatives. We can't have negatives under here. Okay, what about zero? What do you get when you plug in zero? 25. Is that good? Okay, so we're going to take a green pen and we're going to put positives here because that's good. And zero is good. So we can include negative 5 and positive 5. Everybody with me? Now, what about 6? Plug in 6. 6 times 6 is 36. Negative 36 plus 25 is what? Negative. Can't have that. So where is our domain for this function? Negative 5 to what? 5. Question. Now the next one. F composed of F. I'm going to rewrite F with a big set of parentheses, and I'm going to plug in F. Now, come on, people. What's that? X to the fourth, and what's the domain? All real numbers. Remember, X to the first, X to the second, X to the third, X to the fourth, X to the fifth. Those are going to be all real numbers. The only time something is affected is when it has a radical with an even index or a fraction. So I'm just going to type in threes, and y'all can check my answers. So I don't know. I'm just, I guess that one's right. That one's right. F composed of G. F composed of G. That's not that's not right. You can plug in anything in this. That's not right. I don't know why it's not. That's not right. You can plug in any number you want to to that right there. So that might be why somebody sent this question. That's not right. The domain of F composed of G is what? All real numbers. So that's wrong. Who sent this one? I did. Is that why you sent it? Because of that domain? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. wrong. That's uh, evidently somebody, whoever 
program the answers in was looking at maybe this one. But that's still wrong. Because no, that's the answer I put. What? That's the answer that I put, so I think that's why it's there. Well, I can't change it. That's why usually I can change it. It won't let me change it. Okay, what's, I'm going to just put a 3 here. And okay, okay, check, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that gives us 25 minus x squared. 25 minus x squared. And the domain, what do we say for that one? Negative, positive, negative 5? I'm just going to put a 3. Because they're going to want it five different ways. So I'm just going to, what was that? What are you doing on your phone? Yeah, you need to turn it off or move it or not be on it. Because you know that that makes teachers angry. Okay, so three. So this means you're bringing us food Monday. Say again. This means you're bringing us food Monday. Oh, well, and I can't do that because they'll get mad. Okay, I can bring it and not let them know about it. I can do that. They'll never know, right? Yeah, y'all sitting here. Eat. Just turn our camera off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just keep it on the board. Yeah, intentionally leave them out. F composed of F is X to the fourth. I can type that one in. X to the fourth. And the domain is all real numbers. And I'm not going to do all that. Put a, type in three. It should. In some of these classes, you can type in an R. And I don't understand why you can't type in an R here. But especially somebody that can't type. It's all real numbers. And I don't mind if you put that on a test and it marks it wrong. I don't know why they. I don't know why they want you to write interval notation. Never. You can put a. They can put an R there. And it doesn't take that much. But anyway, is this a test question? Yes. This is a test question. So make sure you uh, put a note on this one. And the last one is, let's see, 7, yeah, 2.6, number 7. Okay, we haven't went over this yet. And I don't want to go over it right now, okay? But is this important? Yes. This is your first week of Calc 1, all right? That's called the difference quotient, all right? I don't want to go into it right yet. i got a little bit more. I've got some slides to go over today, and we're going to finish. I'm, I'm going to leave that one alone right now, okay? And don't feel bad if you are confused on that one because, like I said, that's that's what you start studying the first week of calculus. So let me go to my handy dandy thing here. We already went over one like this. That's the, we just went over that one. Okay, now no, we have we have went over the one like this. This is a test question. So go ahead and write it down. I think most of you will be able to do it. I hope we can get to the difference quotient today. We only got like 10 minutes in each class, so. I think we only got 15 minutes in this one. Yep. So, so x squared plus 1 and 3x plus 5. So f plus g. And you can do this two different ways. You can plug the number in and then do the math, or you can do the math and plug the number in. I don't care. X squared plus 1 plus 3X plus 5. Or you can plug the numbers in and get 1 plus 1 is 2. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 plus 2 is what? 10. Or you can say X squared plus 3X plus 6, and evaluate that at 1. That means evaluate. You're going to see that in calculus, too. So, and parentheses squared plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 
plus 3 times parentheses plus 6. 1 plus 4, or 3, plus 6 is 10. So either way you do it, are you going to get the same answer? Yes. Now you could have plugged in a 1 at the beginning. And what would you have got? 1 plus 1? And then plug in 3 times 1 is 3, plus 5 is 8. 8 plus 2 is what? 10. So it doesn't matter how you do it. You can do it algebraically, then plug in the math, or you can do the math and then add, whichever one you want to do. F minus G, same thing. Plug in negative 3, subtract them, or do it algebraic. So that's going to be X squared plus 1 minus 3X plus 5. You've got to distribute that negative 1. X squared plus 1 minus 3X minus 5. X squared, what is, uh, sorry, what is 1 minus 5? 4 and evaluated at negative 3. Parentheses squared, minus 3 times parentheses, minus 4. Negative 3, negative 3. Negative 3, quantity squared is 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is what? Minus 4. What's 18 minus 4? So A is, and you can do it like this. What is negative 3 squared? What's 9 plus 1? 10. And go over here. What's negative 3 times 3? Negative 9 plus 5? Negative 4. And what is 10 minus a negative 4? 14. So it doesn't matter how you do it. Now, what about the last one? Well, multiply them together. And I'll go ahead and clear this. What'd you say? I couldn't hear you. Okay. F times G. X squared plus 1 times 3X plus 5. Now, could I plug in 5 and then multiply them together? Yes. 26 and 15 plus 5 is what? 20. Now don't reach for the calculator. What's 26 times 10? 260. What's 260 plus 260? 580. Okay, so there's that. Now, let's try, or not 5, not 260. 260 and 260 is 520. 520. Okay, now, uh, use the FOIL method. We own Zion. 3x squared. Plus 5x, so 3x to the third plus 5x squared. My, uh, plus 3x plus 5. And you have a four term polynomial. So plug in 5, 3 times 5 to the third power, plus 5 times 5 to the second power, plus 3 times 5, plus 5. <clears throat> 5 to the third power is 125. 125, what's the dollar 25 times 3? 375. 25 times 5, how many, how many what's 5 quarters? Dollar 25, Hubert. 3 plus 15, uh, that's 15 plus 5. 15 plus 5, and we get, what's 375, what's $3.75 plus $1.25? It's a miracle. And what's 15 plus 5? 5.20. It's a miracle. That's up to you, however you want to do it.
I know. Just there's no sense in raising the bar and trying to improve. You know, no, no sense in that. Just go, just go with, just go with the minimum, right? I mean, you get the answer right. No, that's not right. You're, you're going to fail. Zero plus one is what? Zero plus one is what? Zero or one? You're right. What's zero plus five? So what's one divided by five? One fifth. So you should get one fifth there. Or you could do x squared plus one divided by three x plus five. Does it does it help you to do that? No. And that's one thing about division. Division, you're not going to get a lot of you're not going to get a lot of composition with division. Unless the problem is designed to cancel something, you're not you're just going to get the same thing as if you just plugged and chugged. You see what I'm saying? If you plugged one, you, you, there's not going to do it. It's not going to do anything. It's going to be the same. So division, I'm a little lax. You can do whatever you want to with division. Now, why do I say not to count this out? Because you're going to be doing this. With that problem I, I didn't do for homework, you're going to be doing that. So you can't get away from it. Okay? All right. That's that. So hopefully you know how to do that. Is that a test question? Yes. So, and you'll see some in the homework also. You don't have a problem with that? Well, I'm glad. I'm, I, want, I want to please y'all. You know, I want to make sure y'all are comfortable and, you know. And you can actually do it on the calculator, which I do not want you to do. Oh, that's all my teacher had us do last year. Yeah, and actually spell race car backwards and you sit there and go. Can't think. People can't think if you use calculator all the time. Okay, that's another one. I want you to, you know, write it down in your notes and, you know, you can. I'm not going to do it because I want to try to get to that difference quotient. And this is the same thing. Except this one, you can't plug in anything, so you have to do it algebraically because you're not plugging in anything. So f plus now, can you do anything with a radical? No. So basically, you're just going to put them together. You're going to put a plus in front of it, and then you're going to put a minus in front of it, and you're going to put parentheses around it. So is there really anything algebraically that you can do with these two together? No. And, and watch. You don't even have to write them down. Just watch. See? Is there anything algebraically you can do here? No. No. You can't do anything here. And you're not going to be able to do anything here. You're just going to put them together. See? So sometimes when you're doing these functions, that's all you that's all you can do is just mash them together. That's all you can do. That's a test question. No. Oh, I, say I don't give you all an easy test question. <laughs> yeah, I say it might be. It could be. You just now figured out race car spells race car backwards? I know, I think that's a test question. No. Because no. somebody will miss it. <laughs> hey, I didn't realize, you know, I didn't realize that chest of drawers was chest of drawers until about six years ago. What? Always, my mom always said chest of drawers. I thought it was chest of drawers. What? Yeah. I didn't realize it was chest of drawers until about six years ago. I lived a sheltered life on the farm. And some of y'all, I bet, don't know that the bottom drawer of the oven is for warming food. It's not for pots and pans. Oh, up there. See? I'll give y'all I'll give y'all a little a little piece of advice. You're going to find things out like that in life. The, uh, the drawer under the oven is for warming food. How? No. You put tin foil around your food. There's nothing to fall in it, of course, but you put tin foil around your food on your pot after you cook it and you put it down there and the oven is still on. It keeps it warm until everybody shows up. Or whatever. That's what it's for. You got all our lids in there. Let's right. <laughs> yeah, the lids and the pots actually go in the cabinet that's usually beside the oven. 
Wow. I'm glad this is. I know something you don't know, brother. Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of little things like that. Yeah. <laughs> and the original like, toilet paper. The original patent for toilet paper has the toilet paper going like this. Not under it. You find out all kinds of little things. Now, look at this. Can you do anything with division? No. Now, you could rationalize the denominator, which we're not going to get into that yet. Because some of y'all, I don't want y'all to have a brain explosion right on Friday, Thursday. Okay, I want to get to one that's more of a test question. Yes, please get to a test question. Here's a test question. You just go ahead and give us a test. Yeah, I should just go ahead and give y'all the test. Yeah. No, no, like, not like let us do it and then let you not grade it and then let us do the real test. Well, that's why you have three chances. And I go over the test in class. Wait, that is right. <laughs> and guess what? Somebody's still going to fail it. Wait. Me? Is that like? That's how it's written. Yeah, that's the test. That's that's one like the test right there. They'll give you F plus G, and you find it. F minus G, you find it. Now, there's two ways you can do this. But the one way is to find, what are you plugging in for X here? What are you plugging in for X? Four. What is it, Pendleton? You got a question, Pendleton? We had a question about the test. Okay, go ahead. What's the question? We get three chances. Do the questions like regenerate and switch every time? Like, is no, I leave them the same. That way, everybody can make a hundred. No, <laughs> not gonna do that. I thought I went over that the day I went over the test. Did I not cover that? No, not. I don't probably did, and I, I forget what I covered. I'll go over that when we when we go over the test Monday or whenever Tuesday or whenever I don't know whenever we get there I will go over all of that how much time you have how many you got uh, what happens when it regenerates how many questions is it pulling from I'll cover all that when we go over the test okay thank you thank you all right so if x is equal to 4 give me the y at x is equal to 4 for the red line and the blue line. So here is x equal to 4. Everybody with me? Yes, sir. So what is my y on the green line? 2. two. What is my x on the green? I mean, my y on the blue line? 9. 9. So what are we supposed to do? 9 plus what? Eleven. Is equal to 11. Oh, what? That's, I like <laughs> All right, now let's do negative two. Okay. So negative two. My the only thing I have is what? Negative three. Because my red line does not exist at negative two. So this should be negative three plus does not exist, which means negative three. Okay. Or minus, minus. Negative three minus does not exist. Okay. All right. Now, what's one? What is my red at one? One. What is my two? I mean, my my blue. Three. What's three times one? Yeah, but make sure you make notes of this in your because what's going to happen is you're going to go home and see this on the homework and you're going to forget what to do. Okay? Yeah, something like that. What is zero red? Zero. What is F red? One. One divided by zero does not exist. So that should be your four answers.
One of these days I'm going to start recording these on videos and putting them on YouTube so you don't have to take pictures of the screen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, they got... Oh, they're doing it individually. Okay, they got 11. We got 11. Does not exist. So this one should be... So just tell me what the answer is. What did they get? Did they get undefined? Okay, so they f of two f of negative two is not undefined. F of negative two is negative three. See that's wrong. Okay, that's wrong. You can't you can't say if one because you can add something that's undefined and still get negative three. So I kind of disagree with that statement. But for your but for your homework and your test, if you get an undefined and you're adding it, now I know you can't multiply by undefined. You can't multiply by undefined. But I disagree with this because what's negative three plus zero? Negative three. So they're saying it's also undefined. So make that note in your notebook. Okay, what do we get here? Three. Did we get three on the other one? I mean, did we get three? Okay. And the last one should get undefined. Yep. So that's how you do those problems. Here is the difference quotient. I want you to write this down, and I want you to look. I want you to draw this graph because I'm fixing to show you. Let me check because some of y'all may explode. Let me see what time it is. Okay, forget it. We'll start with this. You need to write down a different question. Okay. All right, let me get the roll. Let me turn off the recording.